Welcome to the SharePoint Framework and JavaScript Special Interest Group Bi-Weekly Sync. It is July 30th, 2020. Very excited to see everybody back here on the call. So we've got a great agenda as usual uh, this week. So we've got updates on SharePoint Framework. We've got updates across the Patterns and Practices program. Uh, we've got some new community samples we're going to discuss. Uh, and then we've got three great demos from Sidharsan, Sergey and Joel, uh, excited to see those demos later in the call and uh, some really awesome techniques uh, from folks, again, as usual, uh, to help up your SharePoint framework and general client-side development game. But first, uh, as always, we'd like to talk about some opportunities to participate in the Patterns and Practices program or this SIG call specifically. First of all, I really encourage everybody, if you've worked on something awesome for your customers or your company, uh, demo it. If you can demo it, if it's demoable in the sense that you know it's okay for the world to see it, it's not some secret internal thing, reach out to us. We'd love to get you scheduled on a call. There could be web parts, application customizers, anything from the PNP uh, world of stuff. So the CLI or the PMPJS or the reusable controls or any of that stuff all together. Would love to get you on a call to demo that. Uh, just, we might not be able to get you like on the very next call, but we will absolutely get you on a call uh, just as soon as we can. So please reach out to myself or Vesa so we can get you scheduled for a demo. Love, love, love all the great demos we've had uh, over the years. And they just, I keep, keep getting better. Uh, contributing to GitHub, always encourage you to contribute to any of the PNP projects. You can always report issues. We very much appreciate that. So always encourage you on GitHub to join in, uh, report issues. Uh, we don't love that there are issues, but we love hearing about them so we can get them fixed and addressed. Uh, you can always submit pull requests. All our projects uh, absolutely welcome uh, your pull requests. And uh, I know uh, a lot of the projects are working on updating their con contributor guidance to help make that process a little bit easier. Um, as well, uh, if you have some time, you can always help out with issues and questions other folks might have in the issues list. That's always a great way to help out and contribute. Finally, you can always provide feedback about all of the things we do. So how are these calls? How is our documentation? Uh, where can we help? Positive feedback is okay too. And I would just also suggest, uh, especially for like documentation feedback, it really helps uh, if you could point to kind of a concrete area or concrete suggestion about making the documentation better. Um, we get a lot of kind of comments about, oh, your doc should be better. And I don't necessarily disagree, but helping us understand how they could be better really helps us make those changes and make things better for everybody. So moving on. So lots of great resources to point you towards here. So Microsoft 365 developer videos, that's our uh, developer YouTube channel. Those are some more developer focused videos. We've got the PNP video channel, that's M365 PNP dash videos. That's our YouTube channel. So that's all our community calls. Uh, all of our monthly calls and a lot of other great content around SharePoint framework and SharePoint development all up. We've got a whole ton of open source uh, repositories that you could check out, report issues, participate uh, with pull requests and other work, help people out. So that's github.com slash SharePoint slash PNP slash Office Dev and slash Microsoft Graph. Uh, all of those uh, certainly are, are open to your participation and uh, letting you kind of join in and be part of the open source effort around SharePoint and graph development in Microsoft. Uh, love to have uh, all of you be part of that and uh, look forward to encouraging uh, anybody that's interested to get involved there. Finally, we've got a bunch, uh, or not finally, we've got, uh, next to finally, we've got a bunch of sample galleries. So we've got web parts, extensions, list formatting, and uh, team samples. So I want to remind folks, we do have a bunch of SPFX for Teams development samples that have been added in, and uh, we're getting those uh, built up over time. And of course, uh, welcome your samples there as well. And then uh, AKA MS M365 PNP is uh, sort of the landing page for all things patterns and practices. So that's uh, a, that the one link you should remember uh, above all else so you can get to the landing page and that'll help link you out to all these other areas. And then finally, there's another link at the bottom there, AKA MS SPFX gets you to the SharePoint framework documentation and you can follow at Microsoft 365 dev and M365 PNP on Twitter for more updates. 
Uh, and then if you're looking to get involved in PNP, but you're not sure maybe how to get started in contributing to open source, or you haven't submitted a pull request before, and you'd like a little bit of help and guidance around that, around what might be expected or the best ways to go about that, uh, there is a great series called Sharing is Caring, uh, put on by David Warner. Uh, and there are a whole host of sessions here. So August 21st, 24th, and 26th, and you've got doc sessions uh, July 31st, and then August 3rd, 28th, and 31st. So you can always register today. It's free down there at the link on the bottom, aka MS Sharing is Caring. So check that out. It's a great way to get started, learn how to contribute, learn how to contribute to the docs, and just general uh, understanding of, of I want to be involved in PNP. How do I get more involved? I don't know where to start. Uh, this is a great session, and we're super excited. Uh, we've had great attendance at these, and they've been going really, really well, and folks have uh, found this as a great way to get started and get into uh, contributing on PNP and understanding how to contribute in PNP. So love seeing that grow. We do have, uh, I don't know if I'm the first to announce this in a call, but we have a PNP virtual conference coming up uh, September 1st. I don't have many more details right now to share, uh, other than it's going to be on September 1st. It's going to be virtual, and it's a PNP conference. So PNP virtual conference, uh, register for that. Uh, it's free. Uh, it's going to be all kinds of PNP content, Microsoft 365 development content, and it's going to be put on by the community uh, for the community. So uh, certainly encourage folks uh, to, to think about you know attending that. Hopefully you can block some time for that. And we'll uh, certainly have more uh, details uh, on that coming out uh, as we you know, get a little bit closer uh, to getting that scheduled and getting that uh, put together. And uh, folks are asking about volunteers and such. Uh, more details on all that to come. So uh, I, I just don't have any more to share right now other than we've got a date and we look forward to putting this on uh, for the community. And it'll be uh, hosted by a lot of folks from the community. So SharePoint Framework uh, updates. Normally, I'd pass things off to Vesa, but he is on vacation somewhere up in northern uh, Finland, I suppose. Uh, so I will be doing these updates today. So SharePoint Framework v1.11 is out and available. Uh, more uh, great integration with Microsoft Teams. And as well, uh, you can now publish your apps to the store. So if your company uh, has an app that they'd like to, uh, perhaps in the past, has been uh, being sideloaded and things like that, you can now get these things into the store. Uh, and I certainly uh, encourage folks to look at that as, as a great model um, to get your apps published and get your apps sold to folks. Uh, questions on that, obviously let us know. Issues with that, obviously let us know. Uh, you know, Ways it could be improved, obviously let us know. But it's a great, uh, great uh, start and encourage you to get your apps published, look at that process. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a fantastic way to kind of get your, get your work out there into the world and available to more uh, people to easily add into their SharePoint sites or into their teams. Uh, SharePoint Framework, we've got a bunch of great partners uh, in the store already. So there is a preview program uh, for the store. So we worked with uh, Lightning Tools, Hyperfish, Rencore, Office at Work, and SharePointalist uh, on some initial uh, working with the store and getting some apps published into the store. Uh, so I want to thank those partners for working with us in that preview program. You can check out their apps in the store and look forward to uh, other folks getting their apps in the store uh, as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody helping out uh, with that preview program. Very much appreciate the time and effort uh, that went into the work there. And then finally, I just want to do one more reminder of these great Microsoft Teams samples. Uh, there's some, some great ones in there now. We'll be adding more ones as we get going. But if you're looking at how to start doing Teams development with SharePoint Framework, uh, which is slowly morphing into kind of a Microsoft development framework. Uh, you can pu push that stuff into Teams now as well. We've got lots of great samples on how to do that. So do check that out at aka.ms slash Teams dash samples. And that's uh, from us, Microsoft samples, as well as community driven samples uh, for you to have a look at, take advantage of, and then uh, you know learn from as well how to do these great new Teams integrations that are available to you. So PMPJS client side library updates. So 2.0.7 was released on Monday, July 27th. 
It was supposed to be on Friday. Uh, ended up being released on Monday. That was I had uh, some family stuff happen Friday that I needed to attend to. Uh, so push that out, but that is now out. Uh, we've got the MSAL client is in there, updated an entire section on authentication documentation. Uh, so, so check that out. Uh, hopefully have made that a little bit more clear. Um, and that's something we're going to be trying to do with the documentation. We've got a whole new section on contributing coming. That'll come with the 2.8 release. And then uh, we got a ton of great issues, not great issues, but a ton of great resolutions to issues, I should say, uh, as well in the 207 release. 208 release is still scheduled and on track for August uh, 7th, so that'll be out very shortly, and we'll have some, some more stuff in there for everybody. Uh, getting started with PMPJS video series, uh, understanding extension methods, video is out. You can find all those videos in our YouTube channel. There is a PMPJS V2 uh I forget what YouTube calls it, uh, playlist. Uh, playlist, uh, so you can see all those videos. Uh, you can also start following the M365 PMPJS Twitter account. We're going to start trying to use that more and more uh, to push out uh, our updates uh, and take it a little bit off of uh, just like me publishing the updates. So you can still follow me, but M365 PMPJS will be the official account for updates around PMPJS uh, as we move forward. And then uh, just one final reminder, all feedback, uh, we welcome, love feedback, please send it to the issues list. Uh, there's just too many other channels in the world across Twitter and forums and email and everything else. Of course, all the Teams channels, there's just too many of those. So if you have feedback, have issues, have questions, please use the issues list. That just means we, we won't miss it, we won't forget about it, and we could track it uh, to proper resolution. pnp.github.io slash pnpjs for all the documentation there, and then at m365pnpjs on Twitter uh, for your updates around pnpjs. So the CLI slide, I believe Gary would like to present, uh, talk through this one. Yep, I'm here, thank you, uh, Patrick. Uh, okay, so... Um... The latest beta version of uh, the CLI is uh, is now out there, 2.13. So we've got a whole host of new commands in there, some uh, some updates to our SharePoint um, uh, project upgrades. So uh, we've uh, seen some improvements to the new code tool report that allows you to interactively go through um, steps in Visual Studio Code to upgrade the different elements of your projects to get there get your projects up to date, which is a really cool feature that we're really interested to see and get feedback on. Um, so we've obviously got uh, the SharePoint Framework Doctor out there as well. If you have used that and you've got any feedback, again, please let us know. Um, so if you're not aware of what the SPFX Doctor uh, is, is it's an easy way to just check your environment to make sure that you've got all the dependencies required to run um, uh, your the project so if you're you know getting samples down from um the the pmp uh, libraries run the doctor and it'll make sure that you've got the right version of node for that version of sharepoint framework we've uh, recently um actually uh, been bundled into the azure cloud shell now and um, so if you're using uh, the azure portal using azure cloud shell you don't actually have to install the cli uh, it's there uh, by default for you to use now um, which is which is really cool. Um, we've also released a version three um, of the CLI. This is just in preview. Um, this is to help you get ready for our version three that we'll be releasing later in the year. Um, so if you are um, you know using CLI and you want to make sure that your scripts are working, um, that is in the npm repository. Um, so if you use um, at pmp uh, slash CLI dash Microsoft 365, you'll get the new version. Um, we'll be making updates to that, but it's obviously a preview. Um, all the other updates to version two will be releasing regularly through our Twitter um, account. So follow us at Office 365 CLI. Um, and yeah, check out the, uh, the, uh, the, the project on GitHub. Um, and if you want to get involved, we've got plenty of issues available for you to uh, um, work on if, if you if you if you want. And if you need help, obviously, uh, we're more than ha um, happy to, to help you. All right. Thank Thanks, you, man. Gary, for that great update. Appreciate it. And definitely check out the CLI if you haven't. Very exciting to see it uh, get added into the Azure Cloud Shell. That's a uh, really cool thing uh, for that to be there. So reusable controls, I believe Elio or Alex wanted to talk through this. 
Hello, everyone. So it will be Elio. Um, I don't know if Alex is there, but Alex did a really amazing job with uh, the React controls and the React property controls. Uh, we can now announce that for the two projects, we released a version two beta release. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, we want to move forward uh, with it. So we want to start using the latest and the greatest like React version 16 and also uh, Office UI Fabric version 6. We're also thinking about moving forward to version 7. Uh, that's later to come. It's version 2, which means that it's a breaking change. So V1 will still be there. If you are using on-premises, uh, you can still use the V1 version. V2 will be SharePoint Online only. Um, basically, it has to do with the React uh, version and stuff that is missing um, in the older builds. So, Beta is out, please check it out. Um, we need feedback. So there's already some migration guides created by us and they are not complete yet, we know. Uh, we are still looking for uh, these, yeah, the issues, the things that we are overlooking. Uh, so probably what we are going to do is one more version of V1 and then it's full focus on V2. So that's it on our end. Awesome, thank you for that update and really, uh... I don't want to undersell the amount of work that went into this 2.0 beta. So definitely check that out. Give them feedback. Um, help make that uh, the first real 2.0 non-beta release uh, the best it can be. So try that stuff out. Uh, send in some feedback, report issues, and uh, help us get that all sorted out. So I think I'm talking through Community Yeoman Generator. So if you haven't tried it out, SPFX uh, generator for uh, community built. So it's built on top of the out of the box SharePoint generator. A uh, great way to help jumpstart your projects with a lot of different options. But at the end of the day, you get a, a quote unquote real uh, SharePoint framework project. Latest release 115 uh, adds Angular 10 support, upgrades SPFX to 1.11, uh, updates the TypeScript compiler, and updates the versions of the PMPJS and controls. Uh, so if you've got some time and want to work on the Yeoman Generator, help wanted on a couple of things there. And then as well, you can always install the latest version via npm at pnp slash generator dash spfx, aka.ms slash pnp generator for the documentation. And there is a Gitter channel there if you have questions and want to chat about your questions uh, or issues or whatnot in the Gitter channel. And then Modern Search, no updates uh, right now on Modern Search. Uh, the, the June release is still available. Uh, or the June release is the latest that is available 3.14-2, uh, bug fixes and uh, certain other uh, abilities added in. So definitely check that out. Uh, we're not currently accepting PRs for version three. We're kind of in maintenance mode there and working on uh, what we're going to see uh, for, you know, what, what the next uh, version is going to be, version four, what that's going to turn into. So definitely uh, have a look at this. Uh, for your modern search experience, great way to create a search uh, center right out of the box uh, with not a lot of extra work uh, on your side. And then PNP uh, samples, that's going to be Hugo wants to talk through that. Have a shot, Hugo. Thank you. Uh, so we have some new extensions, uh, or one new extension by Joao Mendes, which is uh, Image Editor. It allows you to actually edit images from within a library, uh, changing colors, filters, all sorts of cool uh, things. Uh, on the web part side, we have a couple updates from Peter Paul Kirshner, uh, the React directory web part that was originally created by Joao, uh, where uh, Peter made a fix for the uh, mock service for Workbench. And then uh, the React image gallery, also originally from uh, Joao, where Peter Paul Kirshner uh, made an update to the version conflict with WebSocket driver. We have a new web part uh, by me. Uh, it's the Enhanced Power Apps web part, which you know takes the original Power Apps web part, the out of the box Power Apps, but it adds things like theme support, uh, dynamic data support, uh, and responsive uh, responsive resizing. I had promised April Dunham I would do this, so uh, here it is. And then we have uh, a new Manage uh, Profile Card Properties uh, by Joao Mendez which allows you to actually edit uh, a user's property card uh, in SharePoint. Uh, so if you want to add custom profiles and things like that, that's how you would do that. And finally, we have a brand new web part from uh, Ramin Amadi, which allows you to shows you how to call uh, Dynamics 365 CRM APIs. 
to show content in the page. We welcome all of you to contribute to samples, uh, and those samples are open source. If you see something that you'd like to fix or update uh, in the samples as well, uh, you're welcome to do this. We welcome all contributions. Thank you, everyone. Back to you, Patrick. Thanks, Hugo. And yeah, I just want to echo, th this is a great way as well to get involved in uh, PNP is uh, contributing samples. Again, uh, it's a great way to contribute a sample to the repository and then demo it on a call is, is really a fantastic way to sort of share what you're working on with the community. Sudharsan, are you ready to go? Yes. So let me share my screen. Hi, everyone. I am Sudarshan Kesav Narayanan, and uh, I am working as a SharePoint consultant at NTT based in Singapore. And these are all my social uh, profile links. So my blog site is uh, spknowledge.com. So today we will see about uh, App Insights uh, dashboard where uh, we will fetch all the records. Uh, we will fetch the records from Azure Application Insights via REST API, and then we'll display in a neat uh, dashboard kind of a uh, thing in the SharePoint web part using SharePoint framework. So the main features are uh, data fetched directly from uh, Azure Application Insights using REST API. So we are not storing any data as an intermediate in a SharePoint list or document libraries. So the other feature is uh, there are three statistics report which uh, I have developed in this web part. One is page view, user statistics, and then the performance statistics. And there are a couple of filters uh, provided, uh, which is uh, time span, time interval, and the date range. So you can select based on the date range, time span, and time interval. And for some of the reports, mostly all the reports are using uh, custom query. Some of the supporting artifacts like uh, the Azure REST API uh, Explorer. So for uh, configuring the schema and to define the, to study on the schema, what are all the data is returned and what are all the properties returns, I have used uh, REST API Explorer. And I have also gone through some uh, custom query uh, document uh, and then uh, created a query and used uh, SPFX controls uh, for the chart. And you can find uh, different kinds of uh, chart implementation and uh, Hugo has uh, created uh, many web parts on uh, different kinds of charts. And uh, next is uh, Azure Application Insights Report Templates. So let me open my uh, browser and then I'll show you. So the API Explorer, uh, which gives uh, a schema, uh, we can uh, see what are all the uh, metrics, we can explore it, and what are all the kind of schema it is returning. So based on this, uh, you can uh, call the REST API and then you can retrieve the data and then you can present it to your users. So and there are uh, well-defined documentation and the reference, you can see all the documentations and other kind of stuff. And this is an overview of the custom query where you can uh, see a detailed explanation, some of the samples and tutorials. And uh, the other artifacts is uh, there are two solutions, extensions available where uh, it's a SharePoint framework extensions which will help to add, to update uh, Azure application insights. So whichever page you are accessing based on the user logged in details. So this one is a simple uh, JS application app insights which will add the relative page information. And uh, this is uh, app insights advanced which I have used. This is uh, which will uh, handle the partial uh, page postbacks in SharePoint Online and will also uh, provide us uh, uh, custom properties. We can also enable the custom properties while adding the uh, logs to the application insights. So let us move on to the demo. So this is, uh, so I have already installed uh, the SharePoint framework uh, in one of my tenants. So this is the dashboard. This is this is a single page. This is the dashboard where uh, the first section will show all the page view statistics, and these are all the filters provided. So uh, there is some restriction, like up to 90 days of uh, data can be retrieved from Azure Application Insights, and I have also uh, provided the time span. So based on the selection, so all the data are retrieved directly from using Azure uh, uh, REST API. So you can see uh, the all the data, whichever I have used, has the custom properties. So these are all the custom properties I have enabled, uh, like uh, username, 
what is a web id and what is a site url and the user login name and the user email so based on this property i am been displaying a detailed list and also using the charts so and this is uh, user statistics so here you can see uh, the user which page they have logged in and what is the view count and uh, next is the performance statistics where uh, you can uh, categorize based on the percentile duration of whatever the pages and uh, there are also a couple of uh, date range uh, filters you can uh, access it so so this is very uh, simple i am just retrieving the data and then populating it here using the detail list and also using the chart component so to access uh, this the first thing is uh, you need to create a application uh, api access you need uh, to have access to this application id and also you need to create a api key the read telemetry is more than enough we are just going to fetch the data and then display it so i have used only the permission as read telemetry so once you provide the description uh, the key will be displayed only once so you have to copy paste the key somewhere and then you can uh, use it in the uh, framework use it, use it in the web part and uh, regarding uh, one of the artifacts i am talking about this is the template so we have already predefined a uh, few of the templates which are already in uh, azure so you can use this template for example uh, if you want to search for uh, active users who are all the active users currently you can use this template and then uh, and you can see all the details so how to use these details in the sharepoint framework you need the custom query so you can just click this log button and then you will be provided with the query so you can just copy this query and then uh, the time span and the time interval whatever the dynamic values you can replace it you can replace it with the selection so basically i have i have uh, copied all the queries uh, using this templates and then i have uh, created a dynamic filters and then passed in the dynamic values so some of the custom properties i have implemented is user email user login name uh, user title web absolute url so this is to show uh, how we can uh, uh, capture based on the user what are all the pages they have logged in so this is to show that we have uh, we can log it using the custom properties also so so far this is the demo so let us focus on the code so i have created a, a code tour to demo the code so the first thing is uh, there are two properties uh, for this uh, web part one is uh, application id and then the app key so these are all the two properties uh, which we will use to communicate uh, to the azure app insights so the next is uh, all the components uh, whichever i have used in this web part uh, are uh, functional components react uh, functional component and i have also used uh, react context api so because uh, for each statistics i have uh, provided i have created a new functional component and i have used this react context api so that the we don't have to pass the properties uh, from the parent to the lower uh, child component we can directly access the properties using the react context api so these are all different components uh, i have used it on the parent component page views user statistics and performance statistics and uh, to provide a, a look and feel uh, like an azure uh, if you look if you look at this uh, structure so it is uh, something uh, the azure style so in order to do that i have uh, just created a custom uh, pivot component so that i'll be passing in the dynamic values uh, what are the intervals and the time spans and then it will render it and likewise uh, to use the detail list i have also created a detail list a custom component uh, customized a detail list so that uh, based on the values uh, for each uh, statistics it will be displaying the records and these are all some of the enum i have declared for the time interval time span so based on the selection uh, these are all the values that will be passed to the rest api and some of the segments supported are page view url path you can find all the uh, time span time intervals on the api explorer so it has all the documentation so you can find all the related informations so there the next is uh, i have usually i'll be using uh, the helper file where all the transaction calls everything has to be in the helper file and i have also declared uh, 
some of the properties like uh, what is the post URL to which uh, URL we'll be posting and uh, request headers on the constructor of the helper file. I'll be appending these uh, headers and then the API key, whichever we have given it in the web part properties. So this is uh, one of the sample, the customer query I have used where, uh, as I already mentioned, you can pass in the dynamic uh, values, the time span and the time interval. And here I'm just uh, passing the date range, the start date and the end date, whichever selected uh, by the user to the customer query. And this is the common function where I'll be getting all the responses based on the I'll be passing the query and then the URL from the constructor, I'll be passing it to this function and then I'll get the response. So this is a very a simple uh, REST API call using the HTTP client. I'm just calling it, uh, passing the URL and then the configurations and then some of the request headers, passing the application ID and the API key. So I, I hope uh, this web part will be useful for uh, some of the users. Uh, thank you. So that's it, Patrick. Very cool. Uh, great demo and really neat use of uh, that code tour functionality. I've uh, not seen a lot of that, so that's really a cool way to do that. So. Really nice demo, really nice solution. Uh, David's got the link there uh, to the sample. So appreciate you submitting that and doing the demo and uh, very neat stuff. Love to see that. Uh, Sergey, I think you are up next if you want to take over the presentation. Yeah, hi, Patrick. Thank you. Hello, Hello everyone. Yeah, and just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Sergey Sergeyev. Most of the time I work as SharePoint and Microsoft 365 developer and consultant, also MVP under Office Development uh, category. And in this demo, uh, we are talking about how can you speed up the performance of your Gulp Surf command, the commands uh, you use uh, during SharePoint framework development. So I'm going to start with just a brand new hello world web part so i'm going to run web surf and this is by the way this is my web part probably you have seen it many times before so nothing special here let me move this window to the right side and open this one i'm going to add this web part to the workbench and now when i change anything here in my code uh, let's say like this and when i save then you see that in the console, the SharePoint framework build pipeline spins up the process of recompiling the code and producing the uh, JavaScript sources out of your TypeScript and uh, styles out from your from your uh, code. So every time I save, it again spins up the same process, and finally, at the very end, it refreshes your browser. So for a very uh, basic Hello World web part, it works quite nice, quite fast. Um, however, the problem becomes evident if you have a large solution or even medium solution with lots of web parts. For example, here, uh, let me go to this tab and run GulpSurf again. And this is the uh, SharePoint Framework Modern Search solution. By the way, very, very great solution if you need uh, modern search in your websites. So here we have uh, we have six web parts, and you see that this uh, Gulp Surf uh, Gulp Surf command is still executing. So we should wait for a few more seconds until it will be completed. Okay, ready. Now I'm going to add a web part let's say so verticals and now i'm going to do exactly the same i'm going to uh, let me move it again to the right side and this one to the left side and let me open a search verticals container and change anything here like this one for example and click save and now again this uh, sharepoint framework build pipeline builds or compiles, let's call it, compiles the project. However, this time it works a lot slower, simply because we have six web parts, we have a lot of other uh, code services, providers, etc. That is why 
only now we have this uh, browser refresh event. So if you take a look at the digits, at the numbers uh, here, we, have, we see that uh, TypeScript took seven seconds, then the pack took 11 seconds, so uh, one second here. In total, uh, it took approximately 20 seconds to, to see uh, our changes right after we, we save our uh, source file. So if I, if I did it again, then the whole process starts from the very beginning. So uh, that's okay. Let's let's wait uh, until it to be finished. So a few more seconds, and finally, our page is refreshed. Yeah. So how can you improve the performance in this case? So you can do that by using SPFX Fast Surf. That's a uh, a uh, special tool which uh, which increases the speed of this Gulp serve, uh, serve process. However, to run it, you should execute npm script, uh, npm run serve command. So the very first step, it executes the same um, bundle process. This is necessary because uh, before running this custom serve command, we need some uh, some essential objects which come from a default build. That is why again let's let's wait for maybe for 10 more seconds. Yeah, so the pack is finished. And now we have our custom serve command running. Uh, it also takes some time, uh, but fortunately only for the first run. So again, it's uh, I don't know, maybe five, ten seconds more. Let me close this one. And now it is completed successfully. Let me add uh, again search verticals. So this time, if I modify anything in the source code and click save, then it also compiles the sources. However, this time it works a lot faster. So for, for the first time it was uh, four seconds, but all consequent uh, compiles will be a lot faster. It will be you see it's uh, it's less than one second. So and you, you also can see how fast now uh, the, the the browser and how fast it refreshes the page when I uh, save anything in the in the sources. So I click save, and then uh, in less than a second it refreshes uh, the page. So this is how uh, it increases the speed of Gulf Surf. But how can you add it to your project to your solution. That's very simple because everything you need is you need to install SPFX fast serve um, npm install SPFX fast serve globally. Then when you're ready simply execute SPFX fast serve command because that's a CLI inside your root SharePoint solution uh, folder like this. And then as perfect fast serve will do everything for you. Basically, under the hood, it creates a custom webpack based build, which produces exactly the same output as the default SharePoint framework build. So uh, it also modifies your package and the JSON adds some dependencies. That is why you should run npm install. And when you're ready, you should uh, execute npm run serve. In order to use uh, Gulp Surf, uh, Gulp Surf on steroids. So when I run it on the default Hello World, sorry, Hello World uh, web part, then you see that now if I uh, change anything here, then the changes will be reflected almost immediately. So it's even even faster than uh, for Hello World web part. Then how it works under the hood. As I said, it creates a custom webpack-based build. Basically, it adds this webpack.js file, which contains uh, essential configuration uh, plugins for webpack, etc., etc. Also, it spins up a custom dev server. Mm, and this is basically, um, this is how it works. And if you open a package.json, we also have custom serve command which uh, at the first step it executes our bundle process and then it spins up the webpack dev server using custom webpack.js file. 
Um, if you want uh, to see more documentation, then the documentation is available at uh, GitHub here. And basically, uh, there are a lot of documentation here, FAQs, and if you have any any troubles, please uh, raise an issue, and I will try to uh, to help you to resolve uh, this issue. And additionally, what are other uh, cool features of SPFX Fast Serve is that, and why it is fast? Uh, because all compilation are done in memory, so we do not have any additional uh, steps or additional tasks. Also, it's incremental and compiles only changed files, so not everything. And type checking and linting are asynchronous. So yeah, this is it from my side. Thank you very much. Very cool tool, uh, and I encourage folks check that out. Uh, that's another great thing to add into your toolbox of SharePoint framework development. Really exciting to see stuff like that uh, coming out of the community, and great work, uh, Sergey, on that. I mean, the, the time savings is really, really impressive. Uh, and I think now we're ready for Joel. If you want to take over the presentation there. Yeah, can you hear me? I can. Okay, sharing my screen. Okay, so my name is Joel Rodrigues. Uh, I'm a SharePoint developer for Storm Technology, and I'm a MVP in Office Development. Um, for the ones who don't never seen a blog post of mine, please go there, give me one click <laughs> and follow, uh, and feel free to also follow me on uh, Twitter. So what I'm going to show you today is a web part to improve the development experience on the workbench. Um, you can get away with not using the workbench, but as it supports web part, personally, I prefer to use it because it feels a lot cleaner and I don't need to worry about anything else other than my code and before I get it, my code to be tested on a normal page. Um, unfortunately, when you work on the workbench, there is a, quite a few limitations. So let me start just a solution. So this is just an hello world solution, has nothing special about it. As you can see, the only difference is that I removed the max width that comes by default. So one of the things that you might notice when you start using the workbench is that there is a significant limitation in the space that you have by default. Uh, so you, for example, you, even though out of the box web parts, you can see that you don't even get a similar experience as if you were on a normal page. Uh, so this is out of the box. As you can see, the area you have is much wider. Because of that, uh, I try to find ways to improve it. And as probably many of you, I end up having like small blocks of CSS for when I was on the workbench to try to remove some of the limitations. And then before shipping the web part, I will just get rid of all that. Um, so I decided to try to find something that was slightly better experience than that. And I end up picking, grabbing that code from different projects, different fixes I was doing, and put it all in a single web part. What you can do with this is now you can simply come here, add a workbench, customize it to your page, and it immediately takes um, the width of a, of a modern page. Uh, you can, of course, customize some things on the properties. Uh, you can, uh, by default, you apply the styles and it sets it to preview mode. Uh, I'm not really sure why we, ha we have the edit mode by default. I, I personally tend to spend a lot more time building the UI than actually the web part properties because of the PNP reusable controls. The properties generally are something you do quite quickly. Um, so, I also had a switch to show uh, pre uh, in preview by default. You can see 
the experience is not perfect. You can see the switch, but at least uh, it's slightly better. You can also make it full width. So this is um, an extra option I added recently. And uh, I just to try to simplify the logic of the web part, because when I show you the code, you will see that it, this is extremely simple. Uh, I removed some of the logic where I was trying to understand when the page has to be refreshed or not. And I just had a message. You just press apply and then you refresh the page if you want the changes to be reflected. And there you go. If you are developing uh, full width pages, uh, the web the workbench couldn't be used for that before. So you can simply add the workbench customizer web part and uh, that's it. You have full width. Oops, like on a modern page. And you can test your interface according to that. Um, so this is basically it uh, in terms of um, to Workbench Online. Uh, what you can also do is you can also run it from the local Workbench. So if you want to run it locally, one thing you can do is you can go to the um, page, uh, web part documentation where I have some uh, information out on how to run it locally. Uh, and in summary, it's copying some information from the dist folder from your web part customizer to the, your solution. And I will show you that now. So if we, so this is the work, Workbench Customizer Solution. And this is my dist folder. We can simply come here, paste into my test project, and then go to lib, web parts, web parts, paste it here. And now if I stop that, start again. This time I want to go to local workbench. You can now see that you have both web parts. And now you can also add that one. And this is serving from your project because we copy the resources there. Um, is this fine to do? Uh, yes, because if you do call bundle or package solution, um, the workbench customizer files in your solution will be completely ignored. Uh, by the build process, and you can, or you can simply, if you're not uh, very confident about that, about that, you can simply come here and go, go clean, and it just wipes out everything and your solution. Oops, not that one. Ah. One second. So the, li the lib and these folders are gone. So is all the files we copied there. And we can now package um, and uh, ship the solution if you want. Um, if you have, for example, a dev tenant, you can simply deploy the solution globally and add it um, when you need it. Uh, one thing to take into consideration is this solution basically injects CSS on the page and overrides some of the um, out of the box styles. Yes, that's a very bad practice if you are doing it on a page, uh, but I don't personally don't think that's a problem at all in this case because this is just the workbench, it's for developers. You're not gonna break anything. The last case scenario, the web part one to what you need and you just get rid of it. So let me show you the code uh, and this. Okay, so in the code, uh, this is as simple as three, pop three proper properties uh, that we have on the web part. And then for each property, we have, we are importing um, 
a style sheet. Um, that's probably not the best way to do it. I was playing with dynamic imports at the time. I never uh, got to change it, but it works. So probably don't bother that much with it. And for the preview, I'm going really dirty here and I'm just simulating a click on that button. <laughs> um, for the styles, as you can see, there isn't that much going on. Uh, so this was the main one to remove um, the width limitations. Um, there are some playing around because some of the controls were and toolbars were getting on the way. So just doing some adjustments there so everything works fine. And then on the full width, we just do again some small adjustments uh, to make to take everything out of the way and allow the page to fully stretch. And that's basically it. Uh, so two CSS files and uh, click simulation and that's it. If you find something you would like to improve, by all means submit a pull request or drop me a message, I can give it a try. The web part is on the PNP samples gallery. Feel free to make any updates to it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Joel. Great uh, demos from Joel, Sergey, and Sudarasan. Sorry about uh, my butchering of names. I just want to thank everybody for joining the call. We've got a little bit of time for Q&A here at the end. If folks want to uh, put those questions into the chat, uh, either you know for the group or for any of the presenters. All those samples, of course, are available uh, online on GitHub. So any questions uh, there in the chat? Do, do, do. Any idea for how to tie in the modern search results into the out-of-the-box search stats? No. <laughs> Not off the top of my head, I don't. That's something uh, somebody would need to research a little bit uh, in terms of getting that uh, going. Uh, React, use effect. Uh, React, you could absolutely use it. That's newer in React. I'm bad on my React version numbers. Uh, you could absolutely use it. Uh, use effect is uh, a way uh, to sort of get uh, something depends on something else. Uh, so you can see those samples uh, on how to do that in the React documentation. So that uh, is absolutely something you can use. Uh, will the default workbench ever be customizable like Joel's demo? I don't know if the answer is ever, but uh, I don't know of any plans uh, to work on that currently. Somebody talked about uh, configuration on Azure. How will it work in the Azure portal? I apologize. I'm not sure uh, what that question is referring to. Uh, uh, if you can provide a little more context, we can certainly try and answer that. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. So just want to thank everybody again. Thank you all for attending the call uh, or watching the call later on in the recording. Appreciate uh, all of you taking the time to be part of the community. I want to thank uh, Sundarasan, Sergey, and Joel for their demos. Uh, recording will be available in about 24 hours, uh, give or take, on the PNP YouTube channel. You can subscribe today to follow, get all the updates there. Follow us on Twitter. And then uh, as well, the next uh, SPFX special interest group call will be August 13th. Same time. And then the next general de dev call is next Thursday, August 6th at the same time. And then we've got the August monthly community call coming up. Uh, that's going to be August 11th. So encourage everybody to attend uh, all or some of those uh, as time permits. And if you can't uh, attend live, uh, do please follow up on the recordings to get caught up on all the latest updates around SharePoint and SharePoint Framework. Thank you all very much for attending. Have a great rest of your week, and we will talk soon. Bye-bye.